Hi everyone, as we prepare for paper three, we know the 25 marker will require micro and macro effects in it. So in this video, let's cover what major micro and macro effects are. The first thing I'll say is don't use memory devices or other tools to guide you with this. The danger with those is that they confine you with a certain number of micro and macro effects. Whereas what you wanna be is broad, nice and open, flexible, nimble, to pick a wide variety of micro and macro effects. Now usually, you know, I love memory devices, don't I? And lots of other tools to learn things, but not in this situation. The danger is your essay might read rather limited. It might not be as good as it could have been if you were more open and broad. And also bear in mind that as paper three comes, you would have done paper one and paper two. So your micro and macro knowledge will be on point, will be razor sharp. You don't need memory devices. Follow what this video is gonna give you and you'll be absolutely set. You'll realize how easy it is to identify micro and macro effects. Your essays will read so much better as a result. So let's dive in, starting with micro effects. What is a micro effect? Well, anything that you've learned in the micro part of the course will be marked as a micro effect. That's how to identify them. That's how to have confidence in them that they're gonna be marked as a micro effect. It really is as simple as that. So have a look at this list. The first nine all the way up to there are simply market effects. You can derive these from your basic study of demand and supply. So any change in price or quantity from a very basic demand or supply shift on a demand supply diagram is gonna be a micro effect any change in elasticity, any factor that shifts the demand and or the supply curve will be micro effects. Any change in a firm's cost of production, any change in consumer or producer surplus, any change in firm revenue or firm profit or government revenue or cost of the government are clear micro effects. Any stakeholder impacts, consumer impacts, producer, government impacts, are gonna be major micro effects. You studied all of this from your basic knowledge of how markets work. These are all going to be micro effects. The next two link to market failure. Again, very clearly studied in the micro part of the course. So anything that results in a market failure or in a type of market failure occurring is a micro effect. Anything that results in a government failure is gonna be a micro effect too. The next two link to market structures. You study that in year two micro. So if something increases or decreases competition, that's gonna be a micro effect. Anything that results in a market structure forming, developing is gonna be a micro effect. We can look at efficiency within those market structures. So an increase or a decrease in allocative productive X dynamic efficiency, clearly micro effects. We move a little bit now into the labor market. We can look at a change in labor productivity as a very clear micro effect, but more significantly, more directly looking at how a labor market works, a shift of labor demand, labor supply will affect wage or employment on that diagram. Clearly a micro effect studied in the labor markets part of the micro course. Any change in equity, inequality deriving from the labor market. That could be because of a wage differential, the role of a trade union, the role of a monopsony employer, whatever is clearly going to be a micro effect if you derive it from the labor market. So look how easy that was. A micro effect, anything that you studied in the micro part of the course is your micro effect. But even better for you guys, in paper three, that 25 marker, it's gonna be linked to extracts. The extracts will give you all the micro effects that you can talk about. So even more reason not to be confined with memory devices. Let the extracts lead you, have this nice flexibility, this awareness of a wide variety of micro effects. You will be rocking. Let's do the same for macro effects. Just as easy with macro effects. I mean, you're gonna see how basic and simple this is. So again, no need for these silly memory devices other tools know have openness, flexibility, know that there's a wide variety you can latch onto. A macro effect now is anything that you studied in the macro part of the course. So for example, any shift of AD or AS or any factor that would lead to a shift of AD or AS is going to be a macro effect. But then it's really, really easy. Go to your macro objectives, your core ones first, a change in growth, a change in unemployment, inflation, deflation, trade, i.e. our current account position, a current account deficit, or a current account surplus. If any change of our core macro objectives are occurring, clearly a macro effect, but even a change in our non-core macro objectives, for example, an increase or decrease in income inequality as a macro objective, a change in government finances 
as a macro objective would be a macro effect. Brilliant. Anything that results in the change in the value of the multiplier or that results in a multiplier effect, clearly a macro effect. How do we know? You studied all of this in year one macro, right? It came in the macro part of the course, write it as a macro effect, you'll be marked as macro accordingly. And then the last few things at the bottom here, you studied in year two macro, the international economy part of macro. So anything that results in a change in international competitiveness of the economy at large, or more specifically of a country's exports, a macro effect. Anything that results in an exchange rate change or the implementation of a protectionist measure, a macro effect. Anything that leads to a change in living standards, poverty, specifically linking to development economics, that part of the course, maybe development policy or something else in the development economics world there that changes those two things, well, boom, it's going to be a macro effect because you studied it in macro. So that's how you know. If you studied it in macro, it's a macro effect. If you studied it in micro, it's a micro effect. Uh, back to macro here. Again, the extracts will drive you, just like we said before, all the key macro effects that you can latch onto will be in the extracts in paper three. Let that drive, but be open like this and your essay will read so much better. So there you have it, folks. Uh, some micro and macro effects to guide you. Now you know what they are. Now you know how to go about writing an essay, knowing what's a micro and macro effect. Hopefully you've got more confidence in identifying them. What you now need to do is to go through a wide variety of topic areas and to write down micro and macro effects from those topics. Luckily for you, I've done that all for you. There are so many videos on the channel where I break down topics into micro and macro effects so that you can start doing that yourself so that for that 25 marker in paper three, you're gonna find it absolutely simple. So great you've watched this video. Great you've taken all this down. You've got greater understanding, fantastic. But now you need to watch those videos and be confident to identify micro and macro effects of a wide variety of topic areas in the course. I can't wait to see you in those videos. We're gonna keep pushing hard. See you then. Thanks for watching, guys.